Sviatoslava Igorivish, Old East Slavic, Komis Fantoslavu, Svantoslavu Igorivisi, Russian, Komis Fiatoslav Igorivish, Ukrainian, Komis Fiatoslav Irovich, Belarusian, Komis Fiataslo Iravich, Bulgarian, Komis Svetoslav, Greek, Komis Fantoslavos, c. 942, March 972, also spelled Sviatoslav, Grand Prince of Kiev, the son of Igor of Kiev and Olga, Sviatoslav is famous for his incessant campaigns in the East and South, which precipitated the collapse of two great powers of Eastern Europe, Khazaria and the First Bulgarian Empire. He also conquered numerous East Slavic tribes, defeated the Alans and attacked the Volga Bulgars, and at times was allied with the Pekhenics and Magyars. His decade-long reign over the Kyvaneris was marked by rapid expansion into the Volga River Valley, the Pontic Steppe, and the Balkans. By the end of his short life, Sviatoslav carved out for himself the largest state in Europe, eventually moving his capital in 969 from Kiev, modern-day Ukraine, to Pereyaslavets, modern-day Romania, on the Danube. In contrast with his mother's conversion to Christianity, Sviatoslav remained a staunch pagan all of his life. Due to his abrupt death in ambush, his conquests, for the most part, were not consolidated into a functioning empire, while his failure to establish a stable succession led to a fratricidal feud among his sons resulting in two of his three sons being killed. Sviatoslav was the first ruler of the Kyvaneris recorded in the primary chronicle with the name of Slavic origin, as opposed to his predecessors, whose names derived from Old Norse. This name, however, is not recorded in other medieval Slavic countries. Even in Rus, it was attested only among the members of the House of Rurik, as were the names of Sviatoslav's immediate successors, Vladimir, Yaroslav, and Mstislav. This is questionable, however, as these names follow conventions well established in other Slavic lands, and it ignores Vladimir of Bulgaria, who ruled between 889-893. Some scholars speculate that the name of Sviatoslav, composed of the Slavic roots for holy and glory, was an artificial derivation combining those of his predecessors Oleg and Rurik. They mean holy and glorious in Old Norse respectively. On the other hand, such a compound structure name was already known from Great Moravia, as in the rulers named Svatopluk. Clearly Sviatoslav's name belongs to this tradition, as he had a son by the name of Yaropolk, of much the same form, and a grandson by the same name, Sviatopolk. Early life and personality. Virtually nothing is known about Sviatoslav's childhood and youth, which he spent training in Novgorod. Sviatoslav's father, Igor, was killed by the Drevlians around 945, and his mother, Olga, ruled as regent in Kiev until Sviatoslav reached maturity, Ka. 963. Sviatoslav was tutored by a Vrenan named as Mud, meaning quick as a leopard. The tradition of employing Vrenan tutors for the sons of ruling princes survived well into the 11th century. Sviatoslav appears to have had little patience for administration. His life was spent with his Drazina, roughly, company, in permanent warfare against neighboring states. According to the primary chronicle, he carried on his expeditions neither wagons nor kettles, and he boiled no meat, rather cutting off small strips of horse flesh, game, or beef to eat after roasting it on the coals. Nor did he have a tent, rather spreading out a horse blanket under him and setting his saddle under his head and all his retinue did likewise. Sviatoslav's appearance has been described very clearly by Leo the Deacon, who himself attended the meeting of Sviatoslav with Johnite Simisks. Following Deacon's memories, Sviatoslav was a blue-eyed male of average height but of stalwart build, much more sturdy than Tsimisks. He shaved his blonde head and his beard but wore a bushy moustache and a side lock as a sign of his nobility. He preferred to dress in white and it was noted that his garments were much cleaner than those of his men, although he had a lot in common with his warriors. He wore a single large gold earring bearing a carbuncle and two pearls. Religious beliefs Sviatoslav's mother, Olga, converted to Eastern Orthodox Christianity at the court of Byzantine Emperor Constantine Porphyrogenitus in 957. However, 
Sviatoslav remained a pagan all of his life. In the Treaty of 971 between Sviatoslav and the Byzantine Emperor John I Simisks, there is a swearing by Peran and Veliz. According to the primary chronicle, he believed that his warriors, Drazina, would lose respect for him and mock him if he became a Christian. The allegiance of his warriors was of paramount importance in his conquest of an empire that stretched from the Volga to the Danube. Very little is known of Sviatoslav's family life. It is possible that he was not the only, or the eldest, son of his parents. The Russo-Byzantine Treaty of 945 mentions a certain Pradeslava, Volodislav's wife, as the noblest of the Rus women after Olga. The fact that Pradeslava was Oleg's mother is presented by Vasily Tatishkov. He also speculated that Pradeslava was of a Hungarian nobility. George Vernadsky was among May historians to speculate that Volodislav was Igor's eldest son and heir who died at some point during Olga's regency. Another chronicle told that Oleg, 944, was the eldest son of Igor. At the time of Igor's death, Sviatoslav was still a child, and he was raised by his mother or at her instructions. Her influence, however, did not extend to his religious observance. Sviatoslav had several children, but the origin of his wives is not specified in the chronicle. By his wives, he had Europolk and Olg. 16, by Malushor, a woman of indeterminate origins, Sviatoslav had Vladimir who would ultimately break with his father's paganism and convert us to Christianity. John Skylitzes reported that Vladimir had a brother named Svengus. Whether this Svengus was a son of Sviatoslav, a son of Malushor by a prior or subsequent husband, or an unrelated Rus nobleman is unclear. Shortly after his accession to the throne, Sviatoslav began campaigning to expand Rus control over the Volga Valley and the Pontic steppe region. His greatest success was the conquest of Kuz area, which for centuries had been one of the strongest states of Eastern Europe. The sources are not clear about the roots of the conflict between Kuz area and Rus, so several possibilities have been suggested. The Rus had an interest in removing the Kuz hold on the Volga trade route because the Kuzas collected duties from the goods transported by the Volga. Historians have suggested that the Byzantine Empire may have incited the Rus against the Kuzas, who fell out with the Byzantines after the persecutions of the Jews in the reign of Romana Silakopanus. Sviatoslav began by rallying the East Slavic vassal tribes of the Kuzas to his cause. Those who would not join him, such as the Viatics, were attacked and forced to pay tribute to the Kyvaneris rather than to the Kuzas. According to a legend recorded in the primary chronicle, Sviatoslav sent a message to the Viatic rulers, consisting of a single phrase, I want to come at you, Old East Slavic, comma this phrase is used in modern Russian, usually misquoted as comma and in modern Ukrainian, comma to denote an unequivocal declaration of one's intentions. Proceeding by the Oka and Volga rivers, he attacked Volga Bulgaria. He employed Orgus and Pekhanag mercenaries in this campaign, perhaps to counter the superior cavalry of the Khazars and Bulgars. Sviatoslav destroyed the Khazar city of Sarkal around 965, possibly sacking, but not occupying, the Khazar city of Kerch on the Crimea as well. At Sarkal he established a resettlement called Belaya Vyaza, the White Tower or the White Fortress. The East Slavic translation for Sarkal. He subsequently destroyed the Khazar capital of Atil. A visitor to Atil wrote soon after Sviatoslav's campaign, the Rus attacked, and no grape or raisin remained, not a leaf on a branch. The exact chronology of his Khazar campaign is uncertain and disputed. For example, Mikhail Artamanov and David Christian proposed that the sack of Sarkal came after the destruction of Atil. Although Ibn Horkel reports the sack of Samandar by Sviatoslav, the Rus leader did not bother to occupy the Khazar heartlands north of the Caucasus Mountains permanently. On his way back to Kiev, Sviatoslav chose to strike against the Ossetans and force them into subservience. Therefore, Khazar successor state elites continued their precarious existence in the region. The destruction of Khazar imperial power paved the way for Kyvaneris to dominate north-south trade routes through the steppe and across the Black Sea, routes that formerly had been a major source of revenue for the Khazars. Moreover, Sviatoslav's campaigns led to increased Slavic settlement in the region of the Saltovo Myaki culture, 
greatly changing the demographics and culture of the transitional area between the forest and the steppe. The annihilation of Khaz area was undertaken against the background of the Rus Byzantine alliance, concluded in the wake of Igor's Byzantine campaign in 944. Close military ties between the Rus and Byzantium are illustrated by the fact, reported by John Scarlatzis. The Trust detachment accompanied Byzantine Emperor Nicephorus Fakas in his victorious naval expedition to Crete. In 967 or 968, Nicephorus sent to Sviatoslav his agent, Kalokiros, with the task of talking Sviatoslav into assisting him in a war against Bulgaria. Sviatoslav was paid £15,000 of gold and set sail with an army of 60,000 men including thousands of Bekenag mercenaries. Sviatoslav defeated the Bulgarian ruler Boris II and proceeded to occupy the whole of northern Bulgaria. Meanwhile, the Byzantines bribed the Bekenags to attack and besiege Kiev, where Olga stayed with Sviatoslav's son Vladimir. The siege was relieved by the Drazina of Pretish, and immediately following the Bekenag retreat, Olga sent a reproachful letter to Sviatoslav. He promptly returned and defeated the Bekenags who continued to threaten Kiev. Sviatoslav refused to turn his Balkan conquests over to the Byzantines, and the parties fell out as a result. To the chagrin of his boy Ars and his mother, who died within three days after learning about his decision, Sviatoslav decided to move his capital to Pereyaslavets in the mouth of the Danube due to the great potential of that location as a commercial hub. In the primary chronicle record for 969, Sviatoslav explains that it is to Pereyaslavets, the center of his lands, all the riches flow, gold, silks, wine, and various fruits from Greece, silver and horses from Hungary and Bohemia, and from Rus furs, wax, honey, and slaves. In summer 969, Sviatoslav left Rus again, dividing his dominion into three parts each under a nominal rule of one of his sons. At the head of an army that included Bekenag and Magyar auxiliary troops, he invaded Bulgaria again, devastating Thrace, capturing the city of Philippopolis, and massacring its inhabitants. Nicephorus responded by repairing the defences of Constantinople and raising new squadrons of armoured cavalry. In the midst of his preparations, Nicephorus was overthrown and killed by John Tsimisks who thus became the new Byzantine emperor. John Tsimisks first attempted to persuade Sviatoslav into leaving Bulgaria, but he was unsuccessful. Challenging the Byzantine authority, Sviatoslav crossed the Danube and laid siege to Adrianople, causing panic on the streets of Constantinople in summer 970. Later that year, the Byzantines launched a counter-offensive, being occupied with suppressing a revolt of Bardas Fakas in Asia Minor. John Tsimisks sent his commander-in-chief, Bardas Skleros, who defeated the coalition of Rus, Bekenegs, Magyars, and Bulgarians in the Battle of Arcadiopolis. Meanwhile, John, having quelled the revolt of Bardas Fakas, came to the Balkans with a large army and promoting himself as the liberator of Bulgaria from Sviatoslav penetrated the impracticable mountain passes and shortly thereafter captured Marsnopolis where the Rus were holding a number of Bulgar princes hostage. Sviatoslav retreated to Dorostolin, which the Byzantine armies besieged for 65 days. Cut off and surrounded, Sviatoslav came to terms with John and agreed to abandon the Balkans, renounce his claims to the southern Crimea, and return west of the Dnieper River. In return, the Byzantine Empress applied the Rus with food and safe passage home. Sviatoslav and his men set sail and landed on Berezin Island at the mouth of the Dnieper, where they made camp for the winter. Several months later, their camp was devastated by famine, so that even a horse's head could not be bought for less than a half grivna, reports the Kyivan chronicler of the primary chronicle. While Sviatoslav's campaign brought no tangible results for the Rus. It weakened the Bulgarian statehood and left it vulnerable to the attacks of Basil the Bulgar slayer four decades later. Fearing that the peace with Sviatoslav would not endure, the Byzantine emperor induced the Bekenag Khan Curia to kill Sviatoslav before he reached Kiev. This was in line with the policy outlined by Constantine VII Porphyrogenitus in the Administrando Imperio of fermenting strife between the Rus and the Bekenags. According to the Slavic Chronicle, 
Sfinel attempted to warn Sviatoslav to avoid the Dnieper Rapids, but the prince slighted his wise advice and was ambushed and slain by the Pekanigs when he tried to cross the cataracts near Kortitsa. Early in 972, the primary chronicle reports that his skull was made into a chalice by the Pekanig Khan. Following Sviatoslav's death, tensions between his sons grew. A war broke out between his legitimate sons, Oleg and Yeropolk. In 976, at the conclusion of which Oleg was killed, in 977 Vladimir fled Novgorod to escape Oleg's fate and went to Scandinavia, where he raised an army of Vrainans and returned in 980. Europolk was killed, and Vladimir became the sole ruler of Kyivan Rus. Sviatoslav has long been a hero of Belarusian, Russian and Ukrainian patriots due to his great military successes. His figure first attracted attention of Russian artists and poets during the Russo-Turkish War, 1768-1774, which provided obvious parallels with Sviatoslav's push towards Constantinople. Russia's southward expansion and the imperialistic ventures of Catherine II in the Balkans seem to have been legitimized by Sviatoslav's campaigns eight centuries earlier. Among the works created during the war was Yukov Nyaznin's tragedy Olga, 1772. The Russian playwright chose to introduce Sviatoslav as his protagonist, although his active participation in the events following Igor's death is out of sync with the traditional chronology. Nyaznin's rival Nikolai Nikolov, 1758-1815, also wrote a play on the subject of Sviatoslav's life. Ivan Akimov's painting Sviatoslav's return from the Danube to Kiev, 1773, explores the conflict between military honor and family attachment. It is a vivid example of Pausinesque rendering of early medieval subject matter. Sviatoslav is the villain of the novel The Lost Kingdom, or The Passing of the Khazars, by Samuel Gordon, a fictionalized account of the destruction of Khazaria by the Rus. The Slavic warrior figures in a more positive context in the story Chinaistali Viatica by Vadim Viktorovich Kargilov. The story is included in his book Astorichesky Povsti. In 2005, reports circulated that a village in the Belgorod region had erected a monument to Sviatoslav's victory over the Khazars by the Russian sculptor Vyacheslav Klykov. The reports describe the 13-meter-tall statue as depicting a Rus cavalryman trampling a supine Khazar bearing a star of David and Kolovarat. This created an outcry within the Jewish community of Russia. The controversy was further exacerbated by Klykov's connections with Pamyat and other anti-Semitic organizations, as well as by his involvement in the Letter of 500 Inches a controversial appeal to the prosecutor general to review all Jewish organizations in Russia for extremism. The press center of the Belgorod Regional Administration responded by stating that a planned monument to Sviatoslav had not yet been constructed but would show respect towards representatives of all nationalities and religions. When the statue was unveiled, the shield bore a twelve-pointed star. Sviatoslav is the main character of the books Nyaz, Koma, and The Hero. Comma written by Russian writer Alexander Mazin. On 7 November 2011 Ukrainian fisherman Sergei Pchankow fished up a one-meter-long Frankish sword from the waters of the Dnieper not far from the spot where Sviatoslav is believed to have been killed in 972. The handle is made out of four different metals including gold and silver, and it is very possible that it belonged to Sviatoslav himself.